Hello everyone, this is Miguel Greenberg and today I would like to talk about an aspect of the Python language syntax that I believe is not well known. Uh, take a look at these two data structures that I have here. They are almost identical, but see in particular on the first one, on data1, uh, if you can spot any mistakes or typos. My guess is that many of you will think that this first data structure has extra commas. So this is one right after the last element in the dictionary. And here is another one after the last element in the list. So a lot of people will think that this is wrong. And that is actually incorrect. These two data structures are identical in terms of the, the dictionary and the list that they produce. You, you get exactly the same thing. And this, uh, this trailing comma support is actually been in Python for a long time. And not only in Python, it's also supported in many other languages, such as JavaScript, C, C++, PHP, and many more. So in this video, I not only want to tell you that you can do this, but also want to convince you that this is actually a good thing. Uh, there are some benefits on writing your data structures this way. So first of all, the important thing to know is that this makes sense when you write uh, your data, data structures uh, in a one item per line style. So it's sort of appropriate for larger data structures, not structures that you can write in a single line. Uh, but when you write structures like this, uh, it's very common to write a trailing comma after the last item. And if you Google for trailing commas, you are going to find that uh, almost all people, the reason that they give for this practice uh, is related to how changes to these structures show when you do a diff. So, uh, for example, I'm going to add an item. So let's say we, we need to insert one more color in this list. So I'm going to add Caspian Blue, which is another Ford Mustang color. So on this one, I'm going to leave the comma uh, just to keep with the theme. And then on the second one, which does not, I'm going to insert one here and then add the new color there. So what happens now is if I save this and exit, and then I diff the changes using source control. Take a look at how the first and the second structure show the differences. You can see that the first one is much more clear. It only shows the single line, the line that I inserted, uh, versus the second one where you know the line that didn't have the comma also shows as a difference, even though the only change is the comma. So this is the reason that everybody mentions. And it's actually a good reason. Uh, in my view, there is another reason that I don't see mentioned so often. So I'm going to go back to the text. And let's say now that I want to reorder these colors. And of course, everything I'm doing applies also to the dictionary. But I'm going to use the list here as an example. Let's say uh, we want the colors sorted. So you can see that it's going to be a lot easier to do that on the first element. So I can take the first one, move it from here to here, done. And then this one comes here. And uh, next comes this one. And this one goes to the bottom. That's it. I don't even need to think about the commas. All I need to do is move the lines and I'm done. So when I need to do the same here, I can, I can do it of course, but then there we go. Now I, I, now I need to go look for the commas and fix them. So this line is missing a comma, so I need to add it. And then here I should remove the, uh, the last one. So you can see that it is more work and you know, that there's no need to have to think in terms of, you know, you, do you have a comma? You, don't have a comma. So for these two reasons, I believe it's a good practice when you write your structures in this format to leave a trailing comma every time. 
Uh, so I mentioned that this is a practice that is supported in many languages and there is actually one very big and important exception to this. Uh, the one language, or actually it's not really a language, but a syntax or a format uh, that doesn't support this is JSON. So if you have a JSON file, uh, unless you have a very permissive JSON parser, uh, this isn't supported. So then definitely don't do this because it's not going to work. Uh, but uh, when, when you're working with, uh, with Python and many other languages, this is actually a good idea because it makes editing easier and it makes uh, the diffs uh, a little bit more clear to the eye. So anyway, I hope this was useful uh, and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.